In this section of the tutorial, I will show how to automate the process of importing scene builds from Blender to SFM. These are all the steps required to port Blender maps into SFM. If you're already familiar with Blender, Source Tools, VTF Edit, Crowbar, and have a basic understanding of programming, this chart alone might be enough to guide you through the process. But don't worry. I'll walk you through each step in detail. The first step is scaling the map to match hammer units. To do that, I'll copy the map into a separate Blender session alongside a custom reference character that's roughly 40 hammer units tall, and then scale the map accordingly to fit that character. Go to File, External Data, Unpack Resources. Blender sometimes embeds texture files directly into the project, so it's important to unpack them now to ensure they're saved as separate files for later use. If the model doesn't scale properly, it likely has uh, constraints or armature dependencies. In that case, parent all the mesh objects and bones to a new empty, then scale the empty instead. Now unparent everything from the empty we just created. Then in object mode, press F3, search for apply rotation and scale, and run that command to finalize the transformation. Now select all of the mesh objects and in edit mode press P and separate by material. In the scene collection you will get many mesh objects, each one with a separate material. Now for each object you need to make sure that the name matches the base color used. If there's no base color image used, type whatever you want but later make sure to place an image into the external data folder that matches the name you used. Repeat this for all the materials used. You can automate this process with a Python script, but I will do it manually to not overcomplicate things. Next, we need to group the mesh objects. Since SFM supports a maximum of 32 materials per model, make sure each group contains fewer than 32 materials, parent each group to its own empty, and place these empties into separate collections with clear descriptive names. Repeat this process until you have a hierarchy of collections like this. You don't need to worry about naming the empties, because SFM only reads the collection names and automatically renames the empties to root transform. Now using SFM source tools, export each collection. Now, create a QC file for each exported DMX file. This lets us compile the models directly into the user mod slash models folder of our choice. Now, 
Be sure that the CD materials path in all your QC files is exactly the same across every model. Now compile every QC file using Crowbar. As you can see, all the models that were compiled can be found in this folder. Now, in the external data folder containing the textures exported from Blender, add any textures you created earlier for Blender materials that didn't have base color images. Now, let's perform a batch convert of the PNG, JPG and Targa files into VTF files to use in SFM. The input folder should be the folder with textures from Blender, and the output folder was specified by you in the last line of the QC file. I accidentally typed Cyberpunk Streets, not Cyberpunk City, but that's an easy fix later. I will also perform the conversion on Targa files and PNG files. Now, let's put all the VMT files into Notepad++. Press Ctrl plus H to open the Replace dialog, and replace all instances of Light Mapped Generic with Vertex Lit Generic. Do the same with Translucent. Replace it with anything that's after two dashes, so SFM doesn't read it. I will paste my custom glass texture from my Patreon into the empty Hoovy Glass VMT file we generated. Copy this code from the screen and paste it into the VMT files of the materials you want to have a metallic shine. If you want a specific type of normal map, replace the bump map texture path accordingly. If your textures didn't load correctly, that means that during the batch convert in VTF edit, you mistakenly exported the point .vmt files to the wrong folder. To fix this, copy all the .vmt files we made into the correct folder, which again is the last line of the .qc file that Crowbar uses. If there's a part of the scene build missing, in my case, uh, it's called Cyberpunk City B, it's because it was too heavy for Crowbar to export. All we need to do 
is split the Cyberpunk CT IB model into two or more collections that we will export like before. If you don't want to repeat this process, you can download plenty scene builds made by me from my Patreon.